Hello and a very big welcome to Freedom Church Online. I'm Christian and I'm part of the team at Freedom Church and it's my pleasure to welcome you today. It's our heart and prayer as a church family that you feel a part of us as we come together online to worship Jesus, learn from God's word and to grow in our relationship with him. Today we have Varne speaking to us, continuing our series, Changed Lives, Changing Lives. And his talk is called Journeying to the Cross. Varne is from Macedonia and he's a leader with YWAM in Budapest. He's married to Adita and they have two sons. He has this incredible testimony of how he met Jesus when he was a full-on heroin addict. And actually, his, his story can be found on our YouTube channel back last year on the 11th of April. But before we go any further, may we just give this time up to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come into your presence through Jesus. We're here to worship you and to hear you speak to us, Lord. So we just open our hearts and we ask, please come. Please come and impart your truth into us today by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Bible reading is Philippians 3, verse 5 to 11, and it's from the message. It says, think of yourselves the way Jesus Christ thought of himself. He had equal status with God but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of what that status, no matter what, not at all. When that time came, he set aside those privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave, becoming human. And having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges, but instead he lived a selfless, obedient life and died a selfless, obedient death. And the worst kind of death at that, a crucifixion. Because of that obedience, God lifted him high and honoured him far beyond anyone or anything ever. So all that creation in heaven and on earth, those long ago dead and buried will bow in worship before this Jesus Christ and call out in praise that he's the master of all to the glorious honour of God the Father. Now it's time to worship Jesus, the Son of God who came to earth for each one of us. In the cross in the pressing, you are making new one. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful.
Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Every Tuesday evening, we have a prayer time, and we would love to pray with you or for you. And we pray as the Holy Spirit leads, which means we end up covering anything, you know, from personal situations all the way up to global issues. It starts at 8pm and it's on Zoom, which means anyone is welcome to join us. So if you'd like our team to pray for you, then please do just email us using the link in the description below. Also, we're, we're currently hosting Alpha. And if you've never done this, then it's brilliant. And we'd really love you to come. You know, it's, it's engaging, it's open. You know, you're free to ask those honest questions that you may have. You don't, you don't have to be a Christian to come along or know anything about Jesus for that matter. And actually, here's a taster of what it's like. Welcome to Alpha. If anyone does spring to mind, then please do invite them along or bring them along. It's Thursday at 8 p.m., every Thursday for that matter, and it's from the comfort of your own home via Zoom. So do just email us and we'll send you the link. And finally, next Sunday is our Love Sunday, and we have a great lineup of activities for everyone and a top draw talk by Hannah Steele. Here's a short intro into our Love Sunday.
We would love to see you, whether that's in person in Great Hawksley or on Zoom. Please do come along. Now it's time to listen to Varney. Good morning, Freedom Church. It's my privilege this morning to be with you. I wish it's in person where I can uh, greet you and hug you. But as of now, we are thankful even that uh, we could do this way. My name is Vane Arsov. I'm a Macedonian and I'm uh, working in uh, Budapest with a mission organization called Youth with a Mission or shortly YOM. I'm married to a Polish lady. We have uh, two wonderful sons uh, who are six and five. And I'm looking forward to introduce all my family to you guys. So I was asked to be part of this amazing series that you're going through, guys, Change Life, Changing Lives. And I believe part of that is uh, because of my testimony of uh, the faithful work that God did in my life, and it's still doing it. And um, if you want to know a little bit more about that, you can watch uh, the video on your YouTube channel. As I was interviewed on, um, I believe, 11 of April 2021. And uh, I'm going in uh, more details uh, what God did in my life. But shortly to say that I was a drug addict for more than 10 years. And in my deepest uh, pit of hell here on earth, God found me and uh, completely transform and change my life. And since then, I'm in uh, this journey with him of discovering who he is more and uh, who he made me to be and how I can be a servant to see his kingdom uh, be spread all around here on earth. Um, many of us probably have a heroes from the Bibles that we maybe want to be like them, or uh, we wish we learn from them. And um, yeah, I have some of them in the Bible. But when I went uh, to my journey with God, I thought that it's proper to learn from Jesus and from his journey here that he had it on the earth 2000 years ago. And um, I will like to that all of us will look through some examples of what he did here on the earth and how we can learn from him. He, uh, he had a, an amazing position with Father God and the Holy Spirit in the uh, heavenly uh, realms, yet he decided to come down on earth and live his life so that he can endure the cross and achieve what was unachievable uh, uh, among us or that we can, couldn't achieve with our own strength anything. And that's to have this relationship with God restored and that we can walk in full potential how we are made to make a difference in this earth and to help uh, in this business of changing lives or maybe even transforming uh, lives. So I would like to read uh, some verses and um, I will go with uh, Philippians chapter 2 uh, verses from uh, 5 till 13 and uh, chapter 3 verse 10. So it says, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born uh, in the likeness of man, and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, 
So now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. In chapter 3, verse 10, Paul says, That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. What a powerful verses. What a God we have who emptied himself to come and be part of us. He had an amazing journey here on earth. And as I was walking in my journey, I came to this revelation uh, that, okay, if God, Jesus, who totally transformed and changed my life, did this, I believe he has the same plan for me to do while I'm here on earth. And I went through this journey of discovering how was his journey, how he achieved what was unachievable for men, for you and me. And so I want to, if, if I will put a title of uh, this teaching would be Journey to the Cross because everything was achieved on the cross and everything that uh, Jesus was doing here on earth had a point, had a, uh, he could have seen in front of him the cross. He knew what he was here for, he knew where he is going and that cross uh, was that uh, plan of a uh, big plan of God the Father. And so, as we read in these verses in Philippians, it shows a little bit of, uh, or it summarizes that uh, uh, journey that God had. It. And I want to go through some things that I believe it's good for us to look through and to be reminded, to be encouraged by what Jesus did, that even we could do that. What Jesus did change my life, change your life, changing lives all around. And I believe it will continue changing lives. But if you and me again go through this journey, I believe that the people will be encouraged by our testimonies, by our lives to seek Jesus Christ who can change their lives as well. In general, Jesus gave up all his rights for you and for me. He gave up everything so that the lives could be changed and transformed. And the question that I want to go again and again here, as we are looking through uh, different aspects of uh, how he gave up his rights, is are we willing? Do we want? Are we willing to give up our rights? Do we want to give up our rights? In a... Um, in a world that it's all about my right, my right, I have that right, I deserve that. The message of the cross, the message of this journey of Jesus, it's all contradictory. But because of that, it has an impact and it transforms and changes lives. In this uh, uh, passage in Philippians, in verse 7, it says that he emptied himself. He was willing to empty himself, to not grasp, grasp uh, that he is God to be considered like something that he must grasp on. But he gave up that. He gave up his position. He gave up his reputation. The question for me, am I ready to give up, to give up that? Am I willing to do that? Not sure. It's not easy always because... I want to, people to know me um, by my maybe position sometimes. Maybe I introduce even myself sometimes like that. But is that really that God wants me to do? Because he emptied himself from that. The other thing 
that in verse 8, for instance, says, it's he humbled himself. And we, uh, we see many examples of his humble life as while he was uh, living here. We remember he washed the feet to his disciples. That was unimaginable at that time, the, the, the rabbi to do that. But he humbled himself to serve others, to serve his disciples. He, has, he is saying that the greatest in the kingdom of God it, um, will be the servants. Wow, that's a big one. Not in this world. The servants are not the greatest. No one, <laughs> barely someone wants to, to serve. But in the kingdom of God, it's differently. And the opposite of humbling, it's walking in pride. And the pride is something that it's always between us and God. In the Bible, in the Proverbs, in Proverbs, in uh, James, in Peter, God, uh, three times it's saying that God oppose the proud, but give grace to the humbled one. And all I need in this life, it's God's grace. I don't want to, I don't uh, want to walk without God's grace. And always when I don't feel that I can go through something, that I don't have grace for that, I want to stop and ask myself, okay, am I going in pride somewhere? Holy Spirit, show me where I'm going actually in pride. God humble himself. Am I willing? Are we willing to humble ourselves? Do we want that? Let's move uh, forward. He gave up his right to self-protect. He did not protect himself at all. He was accused uh, falsely, but he did not protect himself. He gave up even that right to protect himself. If someone could have protected himself, that was him, because he was right. But he gave up even that right to protect himself. See, in this world, we will be accused again and again. If you still haven't been accused, you will be. The question is how I'm reacting on that. Am I going to defend myself? Am I going to hammer down that person? Or I will embrace that as well and gave up that right to, of self-protection. Are we willing? Do we want to do that? Another one. He was rejected. I mean, he Constantly, he was rejecting from a different group of peoples during his journey. But this core team, so to say, 12 disciples, they were always with him. Yet, on the end, even he was rejected by them. How painful that could be. I know when someone rejects me, how painful it is. And I'm sure you know that. And all of us, we've been rejected. We've been rejected, not being accepted. How I'm going to live with that? God embrace even that. I want to embrace that as well. I want to embrace that. But again, the question for us will, are we willing? Do we want to be rejected? Another one, he was weakened. For me, this was kind of hard to understand. I mean, Jesus, God, he was weakened. Remember, as he was carrying the cross, he couldn't carry the cross anymore. They needed to find this guy, Simon, on the road. He needed to help him. God Almighty needed help. Can I be weakened? Here I'm talking physically, but as well emotionally. As I'm growing older, or let's say mature, <laughs> I can experience more and more of um, my physical body not being able to carry <laughs> what I think I can carry. And it's really humbling, I must agree. 
Oh, I think always I can do this, I can do that. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. I can uh, commit to that. But then I feel I don't have strength and it's really humbling. I don't feel even okay with that. Am I willing to embrace that? Am I willing to walk with that? To be weakened, to see even to be seen like that as well emotionally. In this world, many people can be weak in their emotions. Am I okay to embrace even that? I don't want I'm not suggesting stay there, especially if the emotion it's not true. But am I am I ready to embrace that? Looks like Jesus was seeing how he is weak. He lost possession. I mean, he didn't have much. <laughs> uh, but I remember, or if you can remember, on the end, they even throw dice for his clothes. I mean, he, 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 did, he lost everything, all possession. He gave up even that right. Am I willing? Are we willing to lose our possession? It's not easy. It's not easy to do that. We sometimes hold so much on our possessions that we miss the main thing. Because of the possession, we may even hurt other people. But Jesus lost everything. He gave up even that right. On the cross, he was stripped naked. Naked, literally. We can argue about this. But he was stripped na naked. Are you and me willing to be stripped naked? I'm not talking here without clothes. But to me that speaks, am I willing to be open, to be transparent, that the people can see really who am I? Am I open to be vulnerable? Looks like Jesus was. And if he was, if that's the part of the journey, I want to be that. But again, the question to you and me is, are we willing? Do we want to be open, transparent, transparent and vulnerable. Especially, it's hard if you've been hurt or if you've been abused by your openness and transparency. And I'm not suggesting here that you run around and you're telling everyone. But <laughs> I, I, if I don't have a circle of people where I can be open and transparent, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want that kind of life. I can't continue. Uh, and I saying, please find the people, find a circle where you that you can trust, where you can be open, transparent, and vulnerable. Yeah, let's continue. He gave up his right to be rescued. I mean, he could call a legion of uh, angels, uh, a full army, to be rescued, but he gave up even that right. He did not call anyone. To be, uh, uh, yeah, to be rescued. Peter tried to rescue. Oh, Peter, it's always this ambitious guy. I love him. <laughs> he tried to rescue, but um, but actually Jesus even rebuked him for, for that. He gave up even that right to be uh, rescued. That's a hard one. But are we willing to be uh, to give up this right? to be rescued, especially when we are accused again, and especially falsely. This one I found hard and still finding hard. I mean, he was right in everything what he was doing, in everything what he was saying. He was right. Yet he gave up his right to be right. And that's a heart. Am I willing? To give up my right to be right. Are we? Uh, can we embrace that? Do we want that? And as I said in the beginning, in the world where we live, with it's all about my right. It's hard to give up on that, especially when I believe I'm right. Uh, but Jesus did not hold on that. And. This will be the last one as we are coming close to the end. If you remember on the end on the cross, he forgave. He forgave the people who did to him what they were doing. 
and here it's a good question as well for us am i willing to forgive am i willing to forgive those who hurt me who mistreated me who abused me and so on i mean it's hard to forgive because i want those who hurt me to pay to pay their price and sometimes i i, I want to go and really show them even that that they need to pay for what they did and you know by worldly measures that's what they should do but the thing with unforgiveness is that actually we are the ones that we are tortured when we don't forgive we are the ones that we are tortured we are the ones who are in prison we grow in bitterness and you don't want to put yourself in that position i don't want to put myself in uh, that position jesus forgave them and i want to forgive those who mistreated me we have uh, examples even about that in the bibles about forgiveness and it's a way more bigger teaching on that but yeah i want to finish even with this example of jesus's journey to the cross as i look as i look through this as i embrace in my life as i put in practice i start realizing and seeing how more my life is getting changed and by how uh, god it's cha was changing my lives through these things uh, i've noticed that that was even having influence on the people around because what i'm talking here it's totally contrary to the world right and the people want to be unique want to see something different and when they see something different they want to have uh, they want to have that not everyone on the end will accept it fully yet those who are willing will see that their lives will be changed and by their life uh, other people can be changed so this is my message for today of in this topic of changed lives changing lives uh, we look through the journey of jesus and how he lived his life here on earth and i believe if he lived like that and he was showing an example he's inviting you and me to live in this not just to know in our heads but to put in practice to walk this journey this is a long life journey i'm still on this journey uh, in some places i'm doing better in some places still i need to learn a lot yet i want to be focused on this i want to walk this journey in front of me together with jesus because i believe it is possible I hope this is uh, this message it's encouraging you but as well challenging you and motivate you that you can be changed life who changes life as well not just someone else but that you could be that are you willing to embrace the cross are you willing to embrace this journey that God is calling you or the journey that he already show you here on earth I hope that, as I said on the beginning, we'll see you in person. Until then, all the grace. God bless you. Thank you, Varne, for such insight into Jesus' journey to the cross. And to think that Jesus is inviting us to live like this. The question you constantly asked us was, am I willing? Do I want to give up my rights like Jesus did? And actually, that's, that's so challenging. Yet it's exactly what Jesus did. The one we follow. And his life, his life has changed so many lives. So can we just take a moment to respond to that question? Am I willing? Do I want to give up my rights like Jesus did? And let's just, let's be honest with God. Because are there areas where you, you, you struggle to? You know, because I, I know there has been and there, there sometimes still are for me. 
And yet maybe, maybe you're someone who wants to know Jesus, but you've never actually made that commitment. Someone who wants to have your life changed by him, just as Varney has. If so, then do pray this prayer with me. Jesus Christ, thank you that you died on that cross and that I am forgiven. I know I've done wrong things and I'm here to say I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I choose to turn away from all those things that are wrong. And I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit to empower me to live a life with you. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you did say that prayer, then it will be so exciting to hear from you. Please do get in touch. And now let's finish with our blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great week. God bless and goodbye.